13 and 12, Jesus said, Great works have I done, but greater works shall ye do. GWC Ministries is a family-oriented ministry designed to teach God's Word. We share simplistic, practical teachings on who God is, why you are here, and where you fit in His plan. Our mission is to empower you to go forth and perform great works. Bless you, everybody. This is Pastor Steve, and this is E Night is my night. And we're in the, out for another Bible class tonight, another Bible study. And we've got a great message, a great Bible lesson for you all tonight. Hope you can see the screen real good. We'll turn some lights down if we have to. But I want you all to grab your Bibles, grab your devices, whatever it is that you get your scriptures from, because it's time for us to go into the Word of God. One thing I love about E Night is it's an opportunity for us to dig into the Word. Anybody excited about the Word? So tonight, I want you to grab your Bibles, and we're going to give you some scriptures, and we're going to go through this lesson. We'll try to get through as much as we can tonight. If not, we'll save it for next week. But we're talking tonight about no purpose, no point. Maybe you want to type that into the chat. Uh, no purpose, no point. And we've been dealing with the parables. Uh, a week ago, we talked about the parable of the seed sower. 
And did anybody remember that attended a class before? Maybe this is your first time. Do you remember what we said the word parable means? Remember we talked about how Jesus spoke in parables. What did we say a parable meant? Because he talks a lot about parables. I give you all the chance to put that in the comments. And so we're going to be dealing with another parable that Jesus talked about. And this one is going to deal with what's called the fig tree. Amen. So our scriptures is going to be coming from, and I'll put them up on here for you. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Matthew's, uh, we got Matthew, the 21st chapter. Uh, matter of fact, what we do is I'm going to have my first lady is going to read them off to you so you can all write them down for us. Matthew 21, 17 to 20. Matthew 21, 17 to 20. All right, so we're going to Matthew, the first chapter, 21st chapter, the 17 to the 21st verse. Mark 11, 12 to 14. And then we'll jump over to Mark uh, 11, uh, 12 through 13. Mark 11, 19 through 21. Mark 11, 19 through 21. And then I think we're going to jump over to St. Luke 13, six. chapter 6 through 9 verse. All right. So let's do that again. Matthews. 21, 17 to 20. Matthew 21, 17 to 20. Mark 11, 12 through 14. Mark 11, 12 through 13. And Mark 9, 11, 19 to 21. And then Mark 11, 19 to 21. And then we're going to go to St. Luke, the 13th chapter, the 6th through the 9th verse. All right? just want to make sure everybody got there. We probably won't get to all of them, but these are actually going to be three different versions of the same story. But uh, it's going to be interesting to note how they are. So what, why are we talking about this tonight? Our lesson tonight is called No Purpose, No Point. And the question we're asking is, which will God describe your life? So if you look at your life right now and you start to think about how you've been living it, how would God describe it? And we've got three things that we're going to ask you that you should think about. And I'm going to just kind of flip through and go to this screen here. So you see we got three things here. we got task-driven, we have choices-driven, and then we have purpose-driven. So of these three things, look at your life, and this is what we want to learn tonight. We want to start to look at our lives in a different way in terms of how are we living, and are we living a life of purpose. So this is what we're going to be talking about tonight. So I'm going to go back to our no purpose, no point. That sounds kind of harsh, doesn't it? But this is what we need to understand as believers, we as Christians, and not only just Christians, but just people in general, how are, what are we getting up in the morning for? When you get up in the morning, do you get up with purpose? When you get up in the morning, do you have a purpose for getting up? And then we want to kind of dissect what maybe that purpose is. Because GWC Ministries, one of the things that God has given us as our purpose is to help you understand and learn your purpose and then walk in your purpose. So we want to go back to the basics on that because it's now almost about to be May of 2023. We're almost in the fifth month of this new year. And I wonder how many people from January to now have started walking in their purpose. And maybe, and that's not necessarily a rhetorical question, but you can answer that if you want to. But how many of you from January up until now have said, Pastor Steve, I am, I believe now I am walking in my purpose. And now, not only purpose, but is it the purpose God created you for? And that's why we're going to talk a little bit about what, how are we driven? Is it task driven? Is our life choices driven? Or is our life purpose driven? So we're going to go ahead and start our reading. We're going to go ahead and have a uh, first lady. She's going to go ahead and start reading for us. And we're going to Matthew as she gave the scriptures. Matthew 21, 17 through 20. And he left them and went out of the city into Bethany. And he lodged there. Now in the morning as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, 
and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. All right. And look, let's jump down to uh, Luke 13, uh, 6 through 9. So everybody, we're going to the St. Luke 13, chapter 6 through the 9 verse now. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it, and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. All right. So that Luke 13 chapter, the 6 through the 9, and I have it up here for you too, and also the scriptures are there for you. So now, he's talking about a tree, a fig tree. Fig tree is probably not something that you and most of us are not used to seeing and probably not so much in this part of the globe. But fig trees are very common in uh, the uh, areas of the Middle East, Jerusalem, Israel, places like that. And figs were a, 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 a kind of a mainstay fruit or means of uh, substance for them at that time. And some of you all say, well, what is a fig? Uh, if you've ever had... Uh, a little snack cake called Fig Newtons. They call Fig Newtons because the little jelly inside of it with all the little tiny seeds in it, it's made from the uh, fruit called the fig. So they put it inside the little cake and they call it Fig Newtons. So figs were used for all types of different kinds of food. And one of the things that it was pretty plentiful and there were usually fig trees all around. Now, Interesting thing we want to note about the fig tree is this. Fig tree is different from a lot of other uh, fruit trees in that orange trees and apple trees, you tend to start to see the apples and the oranges coming first. With a fig tree, you're going to see the leaves come first. The leaves are going to grow out first and then the figs will come later. So you would see a fig tree and you would see a lot of leaves on it but one thing you wanted to look for and what they wanted to look for in the Bible time was, was can I move the leaves away and find the fruit hanging from the tree? Amen. So it was a very leafy tree. Now we're going to talk about that for a minute because I wanted to help y'all understand what fig trees are. So now the fig tree with all of its leaves, the leaves come first. Then they would later come and wait for, usually around the summer, around this time toward the summertime, that's when people begin to expect the figs to kind of start coming on the trees. Right now, if you look in your neighborhood, you may see that trees that are normally green kind of start off white. We've got a couple of them as well. They start out like they're white trees, like the Washington cherry tree starts off with all of these beautiful white buds and beauty. But then after a while, all of those will disappear, and then they will begin to turn white. I'm sorry, turn green, and then you'll begin to see that green tree you used to see. Fig trees are the same. They're going to come in with their leaves first, and then the fruit is going to come later. So we go into these two scenarios. So Jesus talks about a parable. I don't know if anybody got a chance to answer our question yet, but I'll go ahead and answer it. Uh, uh, Elena said that it's a short story. All right. Very good, Elena. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Yes, it is a short story. And this is how Jesus spoke to the people at that time in short stories. So we're going to use that tonight. So he's talking about a vine dresser. We would call a vine dresser today the gardener, the landscaper, the people that you call to come and tend to your yard. Amen. So the vine dresser or the owner of the garden he noticed that there was a tree, his fig tree, and he was got a little upset. Anybody know why he might have been upset when he saw this tree? He said he saw this tree, and it had leaves on it, but interesting enough, there was nothing else except leaves. He was waiting for the fruit to come, and it says here that, behold, three years, 
Listen to this now. Three years he has looked at this tree. Three years he has given this tree a chance to do what it was designed to do and bring forth fruit. In other words, the fig tree was supposed to have purpose. When he planted that tree, he planted that tree with purpose. It wasn't by accident. It wasn't by happenstance. He said, I wanted fig trees because I want at some point to be able to take those figs off the tree and eat those fruit from the tree. Amen. Isn't that why you might uh, plant an apple tree or if you might plant an orange tree because you're looking or an avocado tree. You want to be able to get that fruit when it's ripe and go in and eat it. So year after year, and as you see here, it kind of gives you a little uh, diagram, a little description of what a fig tree looks like. It's got the leaves and then it's got the figs hanging from it. So when you see a tree that's got the figs hanging, that's a good tree. But um, surprisingly enough, for the third year in a row, the owner of the tree, he comes out to get figs and he says, there is no figs here. He is rightly upset because the reason that he planted the tree, the purpose for it is not being fulfilled. So he says now, he, talk, he says now, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. And this is what he said. He said unto the dresser of the vineyard, he said, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and I don't find anything. What should we do about it? He didn't wait for the uh, young man to answer. He said, this is what you do. Cut it down. Cut it down. And then he asked a question, why cumbereth it the ground? Cumbered means why take up space? Why take up room and not do anything with it? Why are we talking about this tonight, Pastor Steve? Because God wants us to look at our lives and understand that he planted us and he created us to have purpose. He created us to have a reason why we are here. And we, many of us, are spending all or most of our lives not fulfilling. We may be fulfilling some purpose, but we're not fulfilling the purpose that God created us. And I'm just going to flip real quick to the end here, just so I'm going to dive back. You all see this on the screen? That's why we have it. It says, look at your life right now, based on what we just saw. We're going to find out. Is our lives task driven? Is our lives choices driven? Or is our lives purpose driven? We all find ourselves in one of these three categories, but truthfully, people of God, we are supposed to find ourselves at the last slot here, number three, purpose driven. So now we go back to our parable. Jesus saying, listen, I am planting trees to bear fruit. The vine dresser says for three years, and I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna put it real so we can uh, get through this rather quickly. In other words, we have people sitting in church, sitting in church week after week, year after year in church, and not ever fulfilling the purpose God created them. How is that possible, you might ask? It's possible because people are looking for something to drive them, but they're not looking at the correct thing to drive them. It says here, task-driven. Look at your life. Is your life driven by the task you have to do? And what we mean by task is this, your chores, your duties, uh, uh, your job, your family, are those things that you, you get up in the morning, we all do this, we get up in the morning thinking about what we have to do for the day, don't we? Don't we all do that? Yes, we do. We, we, we wake up with our to-do list. And that to-do list is typically going to drive what we do for that day. Now, it's nothing wrong with having a to-do list, but we want to make sure that on that to-do list, that we are operating in what God wanted us to do. What do you mean by that, Pastor Steve? What are you saying tonight? Our lesson is trying to get you to ask the question, God, what did you create me for? 
why am I here? And it's better for us to be asking God that question than for God to be asking us that question. And right now we're living in a time that God is asking the question to us individually, why did I create you? So it says here in that lesson, it says, now the vine dresser says, since this fig tree is not living up to the purpose that I uh, planted it for, why is it still here? What's the point? We go back to our title. What does it say, everybody? No purpose, no point. In other words, many of us go through our, our lives and we find things where if it's not really having a purpose for it, don't we tend to get rid of it? If we go through our house and we're trying to clean, we're trying to make things neater, we find things that we that's not doing any good for us and we either try to get rid of it or we stop using it or we throw it away. Isn't that right? Because we say, well, what's the purpose of having this here if you're not going to use it? It's taking up space. God is saying, what is the purpose of us attending church week after week, year after year, and we are not fulfilling his purpose, but we are merely taking up space? Well, that's hard to say, Pastor, because, you know, I'm in church and I, and I do stuff in church, and that is good. But look at what you do in church and ask yourself the question, can God say this is what he called you to do? Or was this something, I'm going to flip, everybody stay with me. Number two says choices driven. Sometimes our lives are driven by the choices that we make. If you chose to get married, it wasn't necessarily God's purpose for you to get married, but that was a choice that you made. You had children. Wasn't necessarily God's purpose for you to have children, but you made a choice to have children. You had a particular job that you wanted, a career that you wanted to go after, and you went to school. You made a choice to go after that career, get that degree, but it wasn't necessarily what God had called you to do. So then if you look at your life, no matter how... I, old or wherever your age is right now, right now stop and ask yourself a question. Is what I'm doing every day based on the things that I made choices to do or is it something that God called me to do? And that's where we have to get because there's a saying and it's true. Only what we do for Christ is going to last. Now, Pastor Steve, are you saying that we shouldn't do the other stuff? No. In our lesson, it goes back to, it said, the leaves came first. What that means by the leaves came first was the leaves have their part. They play a part to bring forth the fruit. But here's the problem with that. We have people in church that are nice and leafy. They're full of leaves. In other words, they look ready to walk in their purpose. Are y'all getting to stay with me, y'all? If y'all not, let me know. They, the leaves give the indication that figs are coming, right? So when you go outside and you're planting anything, you are looking for a sign that what you are planting is going to be coming soon. We know right away that if you plant tomatoes, a tomato itself is not going to come up. If someone plants corn, a corn stalk is going to start to grow. And when the farmer sees the corn stalk growing, he begins to say, now... I can soon expect corn to get on those stalks. What happens when you're waiting for the corn and the corn doesn't show up? That farmer now is in a dilemma because his income is largely based on the production of the corn that he plants and produces. Isn't that correct? So if he doesn't produce any corn, he won't get any income and he won't be able to fulfill the purpose. So what he has to now decide to do is, what do I do about this stalk that's not growing? We go back to uh, Matthew. Jesus comes across a fig tree and he sees the leaves. Just like this, he sees us in 
church. We look like we are ready to serve. We look like we are ready to walk in our purpose. We come into the building dressed, looking like we are walking in our purpose. But what happens when Sunday after Sunday goes by and we still are not walking in our purpose? And, somebody, and, and, and it's years, and our story today, he says... Three years. In other words, look at the mercy of God. Look at the mercy. And, 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 and so we know, everybody, the vine dresser is representative of who? Let me see if y'all are catching on with me. So now the owner of the vine yard is who? God. Is God. Uh-huh. And, 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 and the vine dresser, meaning the vine dresser is the a uh, person, the gardener, he's the one that maintains the garden. This is representative of who? Jesus. So now the vineyard and the tree is us. So let's make sure we everybody got that because I don't want to move too fast. The owner of the vineyard is God. The vine dresser is Jesus. The tree is us, the church, the believers. So we bring all this together because now we're in a situation where God is unhappy with the fact that he, and he's basically having a conversation with Jesus saying these trees are not producing. These people, they, 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 they are not walking in the purpose I called them in, but instead they are driven by their tasks. Every day I watch them. And let's stick to the timeline in the story. It says three years. Three years God has watched you live your life just based on the task you have to do. He says, okay, and God is trying to figure out at what point does any of his stuff get on your list? Uh-oh. God is looking at you doing everything else that you want to get done. And guess what? Everything else that probably needs to get done. And I'm not saying that any of the tasks that we put on our list should not be done because we have to work. We have to clean. We have to go to the store and shop. We have to take care of things. We have to do all of those things in order to live while we're down here. But the point of the matter is all of that is just the leaves. So then now he's looking to see, is your life being driven by the choices that you made? God is saying, are you living a life by the choice I had you make? Most of us, and if we all can keep it 100, we are living a life of the choices that we made. Whether they were good choices or they were bad choices. We are living the life based on the choices that we made. And in that, that does not necessarily mean God ordained those choices, does it? Can everybody agree that we got some choices that we made that God didn't tell us to make, right? Can we all admit that? Absolutely. We have some things that we felt like we wanted to do. We had some goals we wanted to go after. We, we're doing it today. We got people who want to go after their entrepreneurship. They want to go after their dreams. And all of those things are beautiful. And we encourage you to do that. But all God is saying is when you get through doing that, that what kind of life are you living that I can look at it? I'm the one who gave you the life. But I don't see you using that life for the purpose that I created you. So then we go back to no purpose, no point. In other words, what this lesson is saying, the hard truth is this. God is saying, if you are not living out the purpose I created you, then what is the point of you being here? And we have to kind of, we have to kind of sit in that for a moment. Because this is real. It may not be the one that make us say, get you real happy. But God is trying to get us to the point because he's on his way back. And people are going year after year 
not fulfilling their purpose. And God is saying in the lesson here, he says, I have observed you for three years. The tree is you. The tree is me. You on social media right now, you are the tree. God is saying, I have observed you for the last three years. And in the last three years, we dealt with the pandemic, didn't we? I wonder, and I'm sure God is wondering too, in that period of pandemic, that three-year period, did you or did we do anything to try to seek the purpose God created us? Or did we merely just try to survive the pandemic? Did we try to see what tasks we could still do in the midst of the restrictions that was placed on us? Choices that we had to make. We had to choose what we could do. Choose where we could go. Choose who we could be around. Choose what places to choose to stay in. Choose to stay out. Choose to wear a mask. Choose to be vaccinated. We had a lot of choices, but did we take that time to say, God, now that you got us still and quiet and sitting down, what is the purpose you created me? I want to tell you all this. I, I get excited about Bible study. I get excited about E night. I get excited about Sunday school. I get excited about preaching the gospel of Jesus on Sunday. Why? Because I find fulfillment in knowing that I am living out my purpose. Everything else I have to do, and I have a lot of other stuff that's not even related to this. And if I do, if I and if I allow all of my task to drive me, all of my choices to drive me, I promise you, I would not get or have gotten to my purpose being what drives me. So you all sometimes wonder how do preachers and how do uh, uh, men and women of God uh, in the midst of the things they might be going through, in the midst of all the things they have to do, still go forth and do the things that they have to do for the kingdom. Why we do that? Because we understand that God is looking at our lives. And he and we want, we're, he's looking at how he's going to label us. And we want to know, is are we living a life that is pleasing to him and the thing that he called us to do? Are we doing it? That's why we do it. Because it's, and, and it's very important for you to understand that if you don't know, if you genuinely don't know what your purpose is, that's okay. But you have to be in the mindset to find out. Because listen to this. As he goes down, he says, now he looked at the fruit. He looked for fruit on the tree. He looked to see if the fig tree was providing any figs. And when he saw that there was no figs and only leaves, three years he got tired. Everybody see that? He got tired. And he said, this is what we're going to do because this spot here, we could put something else there that can bring forth fruit. We can put something else here that will be more productive. So he says, cut it down. But verse 8, everybody got verse 8? I'm going to read it out. It says, and he answering said unto him, Lord, can anybody tell me in verse 8 who he is? Think back just a few minutes. I kind of gave you some clues a few minutes ago as to who the characters in this parable is, the short story. So now we said Jesus, God is the owner of the garden. Jesus was the vine dress or he was the keeper of the garden, the, 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 uh, the one that maintained it. And then we said we were the tree. So then it says here, the owner of the garden has made a, a, a declaration that we need to cut this tree down because it's wasting space. No purpose, no point. So now it says in verse 8, and he answering said unto him, he unto him. So now he, Jesus, is saying unto God, Lord, 
let alone this year also. Do y'all see the mercy of God right here? Jesus said, God, I know they have not produced any fruit. I know that they have their beautiful leaves on. They, have their, they come to church with their name brand leaves on. They come to church with the best of everything they wear. Their leaves are great, but they come to church and they're doing many things in the church, but I know that they're not doing what you called them to do. So now, yes, should they be cut down? Absolutely. But the grace and mercy of Jesus says, no, Lord, don't do it. Not this year. He said, but let's let it stick around another year. In other words, it's May. I'm sorry, it's April 27th. It's almost May. And the vineyard keeper is ready to cut you down. I know y'all don't like this kind of teaching tonight, but God has to get us to a place where we stop living task-driven and choice-driven and start living purpose-driven because people are dying and going to hell. This world is upside down crazy, and the people of God are doing everything on this list but number three. We have got in a mindset that we are only concerned about what we can get. How many of you ever watch animals on TV? You ever watch them? Their, or their sole purpose for waking up in the morning is to get food. All animals and bugs and insects do. They live to, make, to get food and to mate. Get food and to mate. And that's it. We are higher beings and we get to do a lot more than just that. But we seemingly are not any more engaged in what God wants us to do than the animals that are only looking for food and to make. As if that's all we're supposed to concern ourselves with. But God is saying, I have a world out there that I need you all to help me change. There are people out there that are hurting, they are dying. They're on their way to hell. They're despondent. They don't know what to do. And my people can't even help them because they're too busy driven by their task. They're too busy driven by the choices that they made. Your choice to have kids, your choice to be married. So you put all of your time into your marriage. You put all your time into your children. You got this job, this career, so you put all of your time into your career. You put all of your time into your car. You put all of your time into the pleasures and things that you want to do, choices that you made. Yes, you started a new business. Yes, you start your entrepreneur. And right now, you know that you have to put in a lot of hours to make that thing work. But you have to be careful even with that. Because that's a choice that you made. But it wasn't necessarily the purpose God created you for. You know what I, I often say? Whatever job, I always say, well, God, you didn't wake me up this morning for my job. Does anybody ever say that or believe that? Raise your hand out there on social media. Put in there if you believe God woke you up just for your job. The whole reason that he woke you up was so you could go and uh, at your employment. Do you know the only one that really benefits from your job is your job the only one that really benefits from you is your job yes they give you a check but you do know this that that can be taken away from you at any moment and they'll be on to the next person so we cannot allow ourselves to believe that god woke us up just for our job or god woke us up just for our husband or our wife or our children all of those things are important but god is saying when are you going to get around to why I planted you in the first place? I'm trying to keep you all from being cut off because the lesson is telling us that Jesus is holding God's hand back. Do y'all see that? He's holding God's hand back saying, no, Lord, don't do it right now. I know it's May and it's January. Has, uh, it's almost five months into the year and they haven't done anything yet. 
But God, give them the rest of the year. Give them the rest of the year to do it. Give them the rest of the year to start living a purpose-driven life. And sometimes people think purpose is their purpose. And I want to make it clear, Jesus in this story, and when we get over to the other in Matthew, it talks about, it said Jesus, let's, let's talk about how uh, Matthew said it. Matthew said Jesus was hungry. He had just got through preaching and teaching. He had just left Bethany, and he saw a fig tree, and it said, and Jesus was hungry. And he says, what am I going to do because I'm hungry? Wow, look at that. A fig tree. And let's put the fig tree back up there so y'all can have it on the screen. He says, look at that fig. There's a fig tree. I'm going to go over to that fig tree, grab me a fig off of that tree, and satisfy my hunger. What happens when you go to the grocery store? And I look, come on, y'all. Look. Don't you hate it when you go through the drive-thru? And let's say you want some chicken, you want some Popeyes, you want some coleslaw. And the first thing they tell you is, we don't have no thighs. We ain't got no coleslaw. Well, okay, can I get mashed potatoes? We ain't got no mashed potatoes. Okay, uh, can I get some red beans and rice? We got a red beans and rice. Well, I want, I want, well, can I get spice? We only have mild. After a while, don't you start getting a little irritated? And you asking your question, well, how is it that you are a chicken place? And you don't have any chicken right now. That is the whole reason you are called what you're called is because when we come to the drive through to get chicken, we expect you to get chicken, have chicken. Or you go to a burger place and they tell me, we ain't got no burger, we ain't got no meat. And now you got to go somewhere else to satisfy your hunger. This is what we're talking about right here, the purpose of the place should be operating in their purpose. I don't know what your individual purpose is. You have to seek the Lord for that for yourself. I had to do it. You have to do it. And you cannot continue to go year after year expecting God to just allow you to come dressed up in your pretty leaves and come to church and go back home, come back next week again with your pretty leaves, doing every other tap. And I'm going to tell you this sometimes too. Can I say this too as we uh, uh, prepare to end? Tasks driven sometimes is a bad thing in church. Does anybody agree with that? Can somebody tell me in social media, how is it bad when church members are doing a lot of tasks in the church or they being assigned a lot of tasks and maybe the pastor and we and pastors we all have to we have to admit that sometimes we have our agendas and we want to move the ministry forward we're trying to uh, uh, get the initiatives going and we are assigning people task after task after task there are some people in the church they are wearing a lot of hats they got a thousand jobs. They come into church and they can't even really worship because they've got so many jobs to do when they get to church. So their church life is really a task-driven church life. Meaning that all they do when they come to church, I'm on this board, I'm on that board, I'm on this committee, I'm on that auxiliary, I'm on that ministry. When I get to doing this, I got to run over there. And God is saying, of all of those tasks, and I'm glad that you're doing those, but God is not interested in all of those other things that you're doing. He's interested in what he called you to do. And if you are allowing yourself to be task-driven, you are going to miss heaven. Listen here. He says, I, look, Jesus said, listen, let them li hang around another year. He says, now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to dung around. I'm going to dig them out, and I'm going to dung around them. Anybody know what dung is? That's not a term that we use now. But anybody know what that is? You might, that plant gardens, you plant vegetables, you plant things. 
It's fertilizer, right? So you put fertilizer down, and sometimes the dung fertilizer that you use is manure. A lot of times they take cow manure or manure from animals because that manure is rich in nutrients and vitamins and minerals that help those vegetables grow up really strong. So they said, listen, hold on, God. I am going to dung around them. I'm going to dig them out, and I'm going to put some more fertilizer down there. Woo! Can I, can, look, I'm running out of time, but can I tell y'all what the fertilizer can be sometimes? Y'all going to be all ready for this? Now, you know, you, most manure stink, right? Yeah, it do. And, and, and it smells, but... If you can get past the smell, you'll be able to see the benefits that it will have to that particular plant. God has a way of taking the stinky things of life, the stinky, the trials of life that stink and they smell bad to us. They hurt us. They seem like, why would you allow this to happen? Put this on me, God. I don't like the way this smells. God will bring people to you that smell. They are like dumb, and he is using them in those circumstances because he knows that it is in those scenarios that is going to build you up stronger. So what he says is, God, let me give them another year, and I'm going to put some fertilizer around them. I'm going to dress them up, God. I'm going to war them. I'm going to make sure they have what they need. I'm going to give them all the tools to success. And then, God, if you come back, what did you read the way you all said, uh, first thing when it said, uh, I think it was Matthew who said at the end, he said, if not well. And if it bear fruit, well, if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. Wow, you hear that? So listen, our Jesus, our advocate, Jesus, our mediator, who is asking God to give us grace. He's asking God to give you grace and give you a, the rest of the 2023. Say, God, let me fertilize them. He said, now, and if after I fertilize them and they accept and acknowledge the purpose and whatever that calling is, again, you all have to be seeking God for that. God does not have any believers. Let me make this clear. God does not save anybody to do nothing. God does not save us to sit down. God does not save us to walk around like leaves dressed up. He says you can dress up with your leaves, which means you're getting ready for your purpose to be birthed. But if we are not cultivating our leaves, if we are not seeking God, for his purpose, we will end up just like this tree, have a lot of leaves, but no figs. In other words, too, if we want to talk about it, too, we are in church and we haven't brought anybody to Christ. You say, Pastor Steve, I don't know what my purpose is. Well, one purpose I can tell you that we all have. And I wish, would you all help me out with that one? Now, I don't know what your individual calling is. But I do believe we all as believers have one purpose that we all have. Do we know what that one purpose is? Somebody put that in the comments. At least we ought to know that there's one thing that we know we all are called to do. When we accept Christ, we are to bear fruit, right? And what is that fruit? Means we have to be out there witnessing and getting somebody, compelling somebody to accept Christ. Even so much, we are out there trying to invite them to church. So you may not be called to preach. Uh, maybe the Lord is going to call you to teach. Uh, I don't know if he'll have you prophesying or the ministration of gifts um, of helps. But whatever that thing is, he has a special call and purpose for you. But one thing we all can agree on is that we are all, no matter what title we have, we are supposed to be bringing people to Christ. And listen, it is almost May. And if you have not, let me say this, if you have not witnessed to one person 
in five, almost five months, really, five months, you haven't witnessed to one person, you haven't told one person about Jesus, you haven't invited one person to church, then you are finding yourselves in the lesson today, no purpose, no point. God is saying, if, listen, you're worrying about the other big gifts and other big callings. God says, I can't give you a bigger calling because you won't even do the first basic calling I gave you. And that is to witness and get people saved. The bare, do you know that that is the bare minimum, but it is a singly the most important? That is all of our purpose. So if we want to live a purpose-driven life, we should be a God should look at our life right now and be able to say, it's almost five months into the year, and, 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 and Elena has brought in five people. It is uh, five months into the year, and, and, and First Lady Sandy has invited ten people to church. It's five months into the year, and Pastor Steve has, uh, and, and he's witnessed to 10 people. This is the record God is looking at. But if all God says, sees is that, okay, you took care of your job, you, you, you paid your bills, you took care of your kids, you took care of your house, you, 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 you got your business started, you got your pop up going, you got your degree. Congratulations for all that got their degree. You did all of that. But I'm looking at what I called you to do. I did not create you for a degree. There's my emoji right there, y'all. God says, I didn't create you just to be married. I didn't create you just to be mom and dad. But I created you so that you can tell others about me. Now, if you are not walking in that basic purpose, do not expect God. To give you any other purpose. You say you not. I, I don't like to witness. I, I, I don't like. To, I, I'd be scared. I, I, all of that's fine. But God Jesus said. Okay. That's what your fear is. Then we will dung around you. We're going to fertilize you. We're going to pray with you. We're going to teach you. We're going to get the word. And we're going to help you get what you need. There's nothing wrong with not having a, 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 the skills to do it. What is wrong is if you don't do nothing to get the skills. So all the lesson is saying here is Jesus was hungry and he went to the tree and he wanted a fig and he did not find it. And first lady, it said what? He cursed the tree, didn't he? Jesus cursed the tree. If you go over in Mark, Mark gives an account of how Peter talks about Jesus cursed the tree. He looked, he said, and right away, the disciples saw that if you go into the Mark version of it, it says, and Jesus cursed the tree and immediately it withered up. Now, I get this now, in, in Matthew and Luke's account, he's saying, dung around it, let's give it some time. But over in Mark's account, he just saw the tree didn't produce and he just cursed it right then and there. What that says, people of God, is God can decide to give you more time or he can decide to curse you right now. Here's the thing, problem with that is we don't get to decide which one he does. So we cannot afford to take a chance on that. And I'm, and I'm closing out. I'm closing this out because Jesus is trying to get us to the point where we are living a purpose-driven life. And I, I, I don't have a problem endorsing the book because I read it too. I thought it was a great book. It helped me out a lot too. Rick Warren's Purpose Driven Life book. If listen, if you if you don't know what a purpose driven life looks like, I recommend that you grab his book, Purpose Driven Life, and read it. And it will definitely give you direction on that. And start praying. Some people right now have to say 30, 40, 50 years, and they still are not walking in a purpose God called them. And when they get to heaven, God is not going to reward you for all of those tasks you did. He is not going to reward you for the choices that drove you. He's only going to reward us for the purpose that drove us. And his, not our purpose, but his purpose. And if you are not, you're going to, you're going to be as Jesus said. They're going to say, Lord, did I not cast out devils in your name? They said, Lord, did I not heal the sick in your name? 
They started saying all the things that they did. And what did Jesus respond? Do y'all remember that? Jesus responded to them. He, he said, he said, I don't even know you. He said, depart from me. I don't even know who you are. Who are you, boo? And right now we are in church year after year doing all of these tasks in church. And we're going to stand before God and he's going to say, I don't even know you because you never did what I called you to do. And if you're looking for a reward, you own it. how many people on a job get paid for doing something other than what they were uh, hired to do? You don't get paid to do what somebody else in the other department do, do you? I don't care if you helped out all the other departments get their job done. Your boss is going to say, I'm basing my review off of what we told you to do. Now, what is your excuse for not getting your job done? And at that point, that's when it's going to be some repercussions and some consequences. So what we're saying today is, listen, everybody, re re go ahead and look at your life right now. And you don't answer this tonight, but over the next few days or so, I encourage you, I admonish you, begin to pray. If you still don't know what the Lord called you to do, it's a, that's a problem. It's a problem. And if you don't, and if you keep waiting, I had to learn that myself, my own personal testimony. I had to, the Lord had to get me and get me good because I knew what my purpose was. I knew what my calling was and I kept running from it. I didn't want to do it. And I got to tell y'all now, a lot of stuff in me doing it now makes me know why I didn't want to do it. But I have to understand that it's not my will, it's his will. Jesus didn't want to do in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, nevertheless, if it be possible, if this cup could pass from me. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. So listen, whatever God has called to you, it might not be what you want to do. And that's why you say, Pastor Steve, I, I have an answer yet, because I don't want to do that. I understand that. But listen, God says, if I, if I called you to it, then I will bring you through it. He doesn't, he does, God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the call. And who he, and, and, and he, and who he chooses, he will equip them and give them what they need. But all God has want to know is, do you want to know? So three years, God says three years. And Jesus said, Lord, give them the rest of the year. <laughs> give them the rest of 2023. And let's see by this time next year, Lord, will they be walking in your their purpose that you called them for? And first thing you said at the end, he said, now if they do do it, well, in other words, then all, it's all good. Good. And you know what? We do good for them. But now if they not, Jesus saying, now God, here's the deal. If they if they not Walking in a purpose, then do what you got to do, Lord. I, I, I got nothing else to say. I, I, I got no more advocacy to give. I have no more grace to give because they did not even take advantage of the grace that I just extended them. So listen, you all, take advantage of the grace. Start seeking God for your purpose, for the kingdom, the kingdom, that reason God created you. The reason God created you, if you don't know that, other than being witnessing, but he's got another, that's your number one purpose. So you cannot say you don't know any purpose because you have that one. So you need to start working on that right now. But for whatever other purpose God has for you as an individual, it's time to start asking him for that. Because you never know this time next year, it may not be another opportunity. And with that being said, we thank you all for coming to E-Night tonight. We hope that you got something out of the lesson. Please share this, like this uh, on social media. Uh, 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 tell people about it. Invite people. Uh, we're looking for you to, you can be a part of our Sunday School 2.0 every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. 
Some of you all, God is calling you to teach. Some of you, God is giving you the, the uh, gift to teach. You will need a platform to teach. We can help you with that. Listen. We've got some fertilizer. We got, a, we got a platform for you where we can dung around you and get you what you need so you can get that practice in and you can get that word. Maybe God has called you to pray and be an intercessory prayer. Whatever it is, God has called you to be a missionary, a preacher, and it's not all those kind of jobs. So he called you to usher. Listen, God has a job for you. GWC Ministries, you need a place to come and have a job to do that God called you to. Ask God if this is where you should come to, and can you come and bring that gift to this ministry? Amen. We ask that you come and be with us. We invite you this Sunday at our pop-up service, uh, the Word Works pop-up service, 13750 South Low Avenue in Riverdale, Illinois, at the Whistler's Crossing uh, Clubhouse in the rear. Come be with us this Sunday morning at 11.30 a.m., in person, amen, and bring your gift with you, amen, and let's work in the kingdom together, and we ask of you, this broadcast has been a blessing to you, please sow a seed tonight, Cash App is on the screen there, GWC Ministry 67, Zell 708-925-7954, or you can use the Giblify app, GWC Ministries of Beecher, or you can mail it, P.O. Box 29. One Olympia Fields, Illinois 60461. We thank you for any that you, anything that you would give, what the Lord would lay on your heart to give. Maybe your purpose is to be a support for the ministry. Then well, all we do is ask you to walk in that purpose. Amen. And with that being said, we thank you, and we will see you all Sunday morning in Sunday school at 9 a.m. And listen, GWC Ministries, we are our purpose, Pastor Steve's purpose is to help you find your purpose so you can go forth and perform great works. Good night, everyone.